Are yoga mats hurting your chances of getting pregnant? Researchers at Harvard University have found a potential link between products that contain certain chemicals and infertility in women. Among the products in which scientists discovered this link are yoga mats. Organophosphate flame retardants, otherwise known as PFRs, can be found in products that use polyurethane foam, such as car seats, sofas, and yoga mats. These PFRs can be absorbed by the body through physical contact, and they also migrate out of objects into the air. Researchers analyzed urine samples from 211 women and found that more than 80% of its participants had traces of PFRs in their systems. Women with higher concentrations of the chemicals are said to be 40% less likely to become pregnant or to have a live birth compared to those with lower concentrations of the chemicals. Flame retardant Penta-BDE was phased out more than a decade ago after it was found to cause negative health effects. PFRs were introduced as a safer alternative. However, these latest studies have shown that the supposedly safer flame retardant may still cause hormone disruption. Human reproduction is a complicated thing. Is this the end of humanity? Well, maybe for Westerners. The author of a study on male sperm count is warning that humans may become extinct. However, the research only shows a sharp decrease in the sperm count of Western men over the past 40 years. The study followed over 42,000 men who provided semen samples between the years 1973 to 2011. The results show a 59.3% decline in total sperm count in men from North America, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand, whereas no significant decline was found in South America, Asia, and Africa. The apparent decrease is perhaps linked with body weight, smoking, and lack of physical activity. Some people are skeptical of the findings, and they suggest the tests don't accurately account for men suffering from infertility problems. Other industry experts say studies that claim to show a decline in sperm count are more likely to get published than those that do not, which if true, would indicate the public is getting skewed information. Endometriosis explained. A new study has found cancer-related mutations in patients with deep endometriosis, an interesting find given that the condition itself is not cancerous. Endometriosis is largely considered a hormonal disorder, but these new findings open up new possibilities in the diagnosis and management of the often debilitating condition. The mucus that lines the inside of the uterus, called the endometrium, normally thickens and sheds in accordance with a woman's monthly cycle. But for those with endometriosis, the lining grows outside the uterus. It still thickens and sheds, but cannot exit the body, leading to irritation and inflammation. Adhesions often form in the pelvic area, and blood-filled chocolate cysts sometimes develop in the ovaries. The condition has no known cure, but patients can seek treatment to help ease their symptoms. Endometriosis can cause severe pain and is usually treated with painkillers, hormone therapy, or surgery. 3D printed ovary helps infertile mice produce offspring. Researchers have created artificial ovaries using 3D printing technology and have successfully restored fertility in sterilized mice. The artificial ovary is a 3D printed multi-layered scaffold made of gelatin, a biological hydrogel that is strong enough to be self-supporting. The scaffold is filled with ovarian follicles, which contain immature egg cells. The structure is then transplanted into infertile mice, where the follicles continue to mature until ovulation. Researchers say an ovary implant could potentially help female cancer survivors in terms of hormone replacement therapy. U.S. Clinic introduces uterus transplants to help infertile women get pregnant. A team in Ohio is spearheading an experimental surgery that may be significant for infertile women hoping to carry a baby to full term. The Cleveland Clinic has announced trials for uterus transplants that will help some 50,000 women born without a uterus or who have uterus problems get pregnant. Once a patient is approved for the procedure, she is given hormones to stimulate egg production. The egg is then fertilized in vitro and frozen. A donor's uterus and part of her vagina is then implanted into the recipient within six to eight hours. A year later, embryos are inserted one at a time into the fully healed uterus until the patient becomes pregnant. After giving birth to one or two babies via C-section, the transplanted uterus will be removed to keep the patient from having to continuously take anti-rejection drugs. 
In Sweden, uterine transplants from live donors resulted in four live births. The U.S. team will be using organs from deceased donors to minimize complications. The team began screening candidates in September. Ten women aged 21 to 39 will undergo the procedure following extensive medical and psychological evaluations.